What's up, fellow junkies, gracious subscribers, gracious viewers, dudes and dudettes, children of all ages. Welcome back to the Horror Junkies 509. I'm Jeff. And I'm Kyle. Uh, as you can see, we got our friend, uh, good old Gunnar Hansen, in the background today. If you guys haven't heard, uh, this man passed away a couple days ago. If you have never heard of this man, we'll fill you in a little bit, you guys. Uh, this is going to be the episode 9 of the gory details, but like I said, we're going to be doing things a little bit different. So, normally, we spin the good old randomizer. That would tell us what we're going to watch. But for today, we're not going to do that. Because we're going to give up, we're going to show our respects to this man, everything he did. I mean, he didn't star in too many movies, but you know, there's one that will always be the number one, the end-all, be-all. One we all know as horror junkies, fellow horror friends, whatever. And that's going to be for us the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you guys. This is probably the biggest movie he did, to my knowledge. I know he's in Mosquito and some other random horror movies, you guys. But this is the one we know him for. This is what we're going to do. We hope and pray for all his fan friends and family, you guys. I never got a chance to meet this guy, but I heard he's the most humble, most gracious guy. I really, I'm, I'm a little upset that I missed my opportunity to ever get to meet this guy. I mean, so this is this is the shout out from the horror junkies, the gory details. This goes out to Gunnar Hansen and his friends and family. Our, all, our thoughts and prayers, all you guys. This so we're gonna give they give this one to your dad, your husband, your brother, whatever. So we're going to go watch it, come back, we'll have our little sit-down chat, like always, you guys. For Gunner. This is for Gunner. Anything you want to add there, Jeff? Rest in peace. Alright, guys. Peace. We'll be back. Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, like we said before, we just got done watching the original, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. Basically, one of the movies that started the whole slasher revolution. Not THE, but definitely a big helper in this one. Uh, if you guys don't know much about this movie, uh, it says it's based on true events, but basically they made this movie after the whole Ed Gein story. So, if you guys follow that at all, I mean, you kind of understand where this came from. It really had nothing to do with the chainsaw. I don't know if it had anything to do with Texas. So I don't know what the, is true based on true events and stuff like that. So if you guys want to look that up, that's completely up to you. All right, guys. But to get into the plot of this movie, basically there's five kids. They're driving up to a certain cemetery that's been having a lot of grave robber, robberies. They're uh, taking not like bodies, but they're taking parts of them. They're making little sculptures all over the place and just really some morbid shit. So these kids are going to go... Texas find out if it's their their relatives that are uh, getting buried up, or un dug up and doing this stuff too. So that's why they're there. Um, basically, they're going to go visit the family's house. They kind of go by the old slaughterhouse. Kind of being at the old house after the after they kind of like just visiting the whole family family abode. I guess I'll go with that one. Uh, basically, they start going to the water hole. They find another house. They go in retarded kids going to houses that aren't theirs with no permission typical kid shit and that's when we meet Leatherface for the first time so basically the rest of the movie is just these kids trying to get away trying to survive do what they can with dealing with the one and only Leatherface alright guys so moving on to the body count kind of a low body count with a count of five on this one so Jeff not much to go off of there but do you want to talk about your favorite kill uh, my favorite kill is near the end of the movie. I won't uh, divulge anything in case someone hasn't seen this and, you know, is in... Or we can just say, spoiler alert! Okay, yeah. Spoiler Anything. alert. Uh, if you can't handle it, turn it off now, but come back and watch later. Or you could skip this part. Go ahead and whatever. Anyways, so this girl, uh, they're about to kill her, and she gets away. She's running down the the street and one of the guys is chasing her and I believe he's cutting her with his yeah, straight razor straight razor while Hitchhiker. she's running away and uh, 
he gets run over by a semi. And I don't know why that's my favorite part, but it is, because it's just funny. I just don't think Jeff likes that character. I don't either. He's a creep. He's a weirdo, so it's... it's mm. <laughs> Alright guys, uh, so for my favorite kill, I'm going to go with uh, the character Pam. Uh, basically, you don't really actually see her full kill, but kind of what leads up to it is just so... So good. So sweet. It's just so satisfying when uh, Leatherface uh, chases after her, grabs her, drags her back to his little jerk-off station, little cutting up meat, whatever the hell it is, and uh, just slams her down on the meat hook. I mean, just the thought of that. I mean, you don't get to see the visual aspect of it, but your mind runs away with you with it, and you know exactly what fucking happened. Like, hands down, that's like the most gruesome thing. Like, you don't see much blood of it, but... That's not exactly where she dies. I mean, I don't think... You don't really see the her actually die. You see her later in the freezer when she pops up and freaks out. And then yeah. I think she dies there because everyone else has kind of got beat with a hammer and a chainsaw. Yeah, there's not a lot of, like, uh, what's the word? Diversity as far as how people get killed in this movie. No. It's either with a hammer or with a chainsaw. But, I mean, it just shows to show you how the times have changed. Like, we have this one. This was probably some morbid shit when it came out. And then we get the remake. And, like, in that one, this guy's, like, sawing people up the middle. Oh, like, right. he's, like, hang on, hanging on that chandeliers. That so dope. I love, like, hopefully we'll get to the remake here, you guys, because yeah. that's one of my favorite remakes of all time. But, I mean, we're here. This is the Gunnar Jensen one, you guys, because this is, this. like I said, this episode goes out to him, his family, his friends, everything, you guys. Uh, so, want to go in and talk about Leatherface a little bit. I mean, how do you feel about Leatherface as a killer overall? I, I mean, what do you like about him? What do you hate about him? I think he's, uh... Like, a cool killer in, in an aspect. And I think it's, like, the whole, like, wearing other people's faces thing is just kind of, like, it adds, like, a... like a sick, He's got his own thing. He's got his own thing, and it, and it gives him kind of, like, a sick, twisted sort of aspect to him. But in some of the other movies you watch with him, it'll, they almost make him seem like he's... I mean, obviously, he's not all there. He's not the smartest yeah. person. He's a little slow... And in other he's aspects, mute. Yeah, he's, for most he's part. mute. You hear him I mean, scream you know, every now and then, you don't but hear him really say anything. No dialogue. But the thing we get from him in certain movies is that really all he's doing is protecting his family. Yeah. He doesn't know any better. So when people like walk into their house like that, he's like, "Oh, these people are intruders. Yep. They're trying to hurt my family. I'm going to protect the family." So in a and way, and then later we're going to eat them. Exactly. So in a way. He's not necessarily a bad guy. He's no. just kind of like a little kid who doesn't know what he's doing. Precisely. It's almost like the last thing he remembers is being a kid. So even though he's an adult now, he's still stuck as being a yeah. kid. All right, guys. So with me, with Leatherface, I mean, having the story of him being like wearing people's faces because you know he's got that skin eating disease or whatever. I always loved that aspect. I mean, the mask in this movie looks very. It's, it was good for the time, but now we've moved on. We've gotten some better things. But, I mean, I've always appreciated this movie, everything that it's done. I love that Leatherface wears a nice shirt and tie and then his apron. I mean, he's a snazzy motherfucker when yeah, he goes to work. Yeah, definitely. He's got some class. Yeah, I mean, and then, like, at the end, he, he's in a full tuxedo for dinner. I mean, I think he's got, like, a woman's face on. He, he's yeah, got he's makeup got... on. So he's, he might be a little cross-dresser, but, yeah. you know, I guess when, you, when you're when you possibly inbreeders, that probably happens. Yeah. But, like, one of my least favorite things about Leatherface, I mean, it's uh, it's something that's so crucial that I can't, it, it can't take away from, it can't go away. But I hate, I, I'm not much of a fan of the chainsaw weapon because, like, you know, it, it's so loud, bulky, and just, like, it's out there. But, I mean, it is, it is what it is. I mean, it's definitely his weapon. I mean, when you think of chainsaws, what are the movies you think, think of? Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Evil Dead. Yeah. I feel like it, lo it works a little better in Evil Dead because he doesn't need to be sneaky, but I feel like Leatherface needs to be sneaky every now and then. I think that's kind of why he has uses the hammer a lot in this one. But Yeah, well, there's that, and then I, I guess in a, in a sense, I mean, I haven't necessarily seen all the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, but in most of them, it almost seems like he doesn't really need to sneak around him. It seems no. more or less like the victims just come to him. So He, needed, he was like, I, I feel like the more sneaky he needed to be was more of the remake. But, I mean, we'll get, we'll, we'll hopefully get there. We're time-traveling, you guys. That's yeah. weird. We're not building Ted yet. Yet. Just, future spoiler. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So, basically, um, like I said, the chainsaw not being my favorite, but it's so, it's so crucial in this aspect. Like, it is, it is what it is. So, like, he's not much, he's not the stealth killer. And it is what it is. But, I mean, as far as Gunnar Hansen played, he's definitely one of my favorite Leatherfaces because, I mean, he started it. 
without him, we wouldn't know what to expect from Leatherface. I mean, we could have ended up with some skinny guy or something like that, but I think the big, bulky, uh, slow killer, I mean, the mute, I mean, he screams every now and then. I think Gunnar Hansen did a very great job, and I think without him, we wouldn't have the great Leatherfaces that uh, came after him. Yeah, for sure. I think his, uh, the whole, his whole build just kind of fits the character and the way he acts and everything. Like, it works. Because, I mean, usually when you would, like, think of something like this, you, you're right. Like, if it was, like, a skinny, short guy... Yeah, it would... Be, it I, probably wouldn't be that scary, but the fact even that, he's with that, like, chainsaw. that he's, like, a big, dumb, mute dude yeah. adds to the... But that's not how Gunnar Hansen... He's actually a very smart guy, but he this is just the guy he played. Yeah. Some people, I guess, don't, uh, get, don't understand that he didn't get a lot of parts after this movie came out, which is... Yeah, because I would love to see what he would, could have done outside of the Leatherface. Right. All right, guys, so without tr trying not to ramble too much, but you guys, Jeff, do you want to go into your rating on this movie? Um, you know, honestly, like, it's a it's a great movie. I'm going to give it... It's a classic. It's Yeah, pretty much. It's a classic. It can't be beat. I'm honestly going to give this one a 9.5. Because I've, I've watched what this one, I've watched this one a lot recently in years, and I'm not gonna lie, it, it is actually one of my favorites. Like as far as like, it's slasher. just one of those ones that it's, you can't beat. It's a good one. Just the whole like aura about the movie and everything, and the house, and just kind of what the whole movie is like centered around is just I don't know. I dig it. So All right. I'm gonna give it a nine point five. You know, Jeff, you're preaching to the choir here, you guys, because you got to give this movie its props everywhere, because, like, the, I, uh, for the time this came out, it was way ahead of its time, in my personal opinion. I mean, 1974, I wasn't there, We none of us were there. Well, some of you junkies yeah. out there may yeah. have been there, you lucky bastards. But, I mean, you know, being able to watch this and appreciate for what it is now, it's so much more, because, like, you know, we get our remakes, we get our sequels, but, I mean, when you actually sit down and realize that this is the creme de la creme, the end-all, be-all, the original. And that, is, that phrase is so important, especially in, after you get, like, so many damn uh, sequels to a movie. The original becomes more and more important. Like, not very often do you have a movie that beats out the original. Like, like the quote is, don't fuck with the original. Mm -hmm. I mean, that needs to stand as long as we're around, because otherwise... We're just a bunch of fucking monkeys throwing our crap around. Yeah. So, you guys, with me, I'm going to give it I'm gonna give it a solid 9. I'm not into the pointers, Jeff. Nothing against you, my friend. But, I, you know, I want to give it a 10 so badly. But, I mean, is this a perfect movie? No. But, I mean, but the faults in it is what makes it so good. It's what makes, it, it makes us love it. Because, you know, I mean, it's just like Star Wars. I mean, we don't love the old Star Wars because it's perfect. We love we love the puppets. We love the shitty and shoddy it's, special effects. It's the love and the heart that goes into it. I mean, know? people look at things now and they're just like, "Oh, that CGI is really shoddy." It's like you know, like the effects they did here was way ahead of its time. You gotta love what they did with what they had. The atmosphere in this movie, kind of being in like a podunk town, the house, like being the way, like just how it's set up, being in the the family home that they were in before, how it's all run down, and just like there's nothing alive in this town. But this family is, and as, you know, people come through, they take them, kill them, and eat them. I mean, like, a thought of that now is just like, oh, that's like everyday shit. That could probably happen in real life. Back then, that, that was probably the most morbid thing anyone could ever think of. Yeah. People, people were probably just like, what? 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, guys, so, I mean, that's kind of what we got here for you. I mean, Jeff, is there anything else you want to mention about this movie? Anything you want to say about Gunner or anything? Uh... No, nope. I, I think I've given my two cents on the whole deal. All right, guys, so, I mean, tragedy strikes, you know. I mean, 2015 has been pretty rough on us so far. We've lost a lot of great people. I mean, not that we haven't lost a lot of great people in other past years. But, I mean, this is when the gory details has been around. The horror junkies are here. So we are here to say thank you to Gunnar Hansen, everything you've done for us. I mean, you weren't in a thousand movies, but, I mean, just this one alone, we owe you a lot. So... If, you, if your family, friends ever watch this video, I mean, awesome. And if not, I mean, at least we know we did our part. We put our thank you out there. And honestly, that's kind of all we got, really. Yeah. Um, so I guess we'll see you guys next episode. We'll be back to the randomizer, hopefully, unless something else horrible happens. That's, that's, hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully I mean, not. 
All right, guys, so that's going to do it for us, Horror Junkies 509. I'm Jeff. And I'm Kyle. And Gunnar, Gunnar Hansen, rest in peace, my brother. Ah!